Today we're going to teach you how to do rapid prototyping in Figma, foolproof design checklists, and extracting text from images. Welcome to Designers Uncut, episode number one. My name is Cliff. Today, me and my fellow designers, Ridden, PJ, and Rob will share three awesome design tricks and techniques that will help you up your game. First up, we've got Ridden with rapid prototyping. Thank you, Cliff. I'm Ridden, a senior UX designer at Morphosis. In this video, I'll be covering how to create interactive prototype in Figma. As you know, communication is the most important aspect of a design. So when you share your design to a user for feedback, don't provide them static designs. What happens with static design is they only get to understand the design in a visual way. So they're only the look of the design. But when you do the prototype, the user will be able to understand the behavior of the design. That creates a better connection. So in this video, we're going to take a boring landing page, in a, which is in a static format, and convert that into an interactive prototype under three minutes. Let's go. So now, as you can see here, we have a simple landing page. This is a app page about our app, and it has all the details it needs for the app. Everything looks great on this design, right? It's just a simple land static landing page. Now, if we had to give this to a user, the user would just look at it and say, okay, it looks good. That doesn't really give you the true feedback. The true feedback comes in when the user can experience the page the way it should experience when the page is live on a website. So let's change this into completely interactive prototype. First, let's see how does this look on the site. So let's move play. I'm going to click on prototype here and click play. Okay, it looks pretty basic, right? All right, let's do the first thing first. Let's try to get this navigation to work as it's supposed to. So when the user scrolls down, the navigation should also scroll down along with it. So, okay, go back here and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to select this com this session of the the page and I'm going to go to design and I will say fix position when scrolling. So what does this do is regardless how much you scroll, this bar will always remain on the top. Let's test it out again. Click. Loading takes time. Okay, let's scroll. Ah, look at that. Great. That's step one, right? Now, It'll be great if we can click on it and it navigates down. Click on this and navigates down. Click on this and navigates down, right? Let's do that. So second, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the home. Since home is already here, let's just say prototype. And I'm going to say, okay, when the user click on it, I want it to navigate to, to let's say, navigate back to here, right? And then when I click on feature, I want it to navigate to here. When I click on add on, it should navigate here. And if I click on testimonial, it should navigate. Let's go down, down, down. Now, where's the testimonial? Right here. All right. Okay, so what we did was every time you click and drag, it says on click, it's going to scroll down to that particular session. Isn't that cool? All right, let's have a look. How does it look now? Click play. Okay, let's try. Boom. Oh, wow. It navigates, but I just we just don't like that jerky effect. We want it to scroll like a smooth animation, right? Because that's how it's going to be in the real side. So go up here, I'm going to select each one of them, click, and I'm going to say, instead of instantly anim uh, going there, we just say animate, right? We go for this one as well, we're going to say animate. Go for this one, and we're going to say animate, right? Now let's quickly test it out again. It's exciting. Okay, let's try it. Add on. Ooh. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. Wow. We go to testimonial again. Go back home. Ah, well, home is jumping back again. I think I forgot to change the setting. So let's go up here and I'm going to say instantly animate. Now, we have a tricky one here. Login. The login screen is a separate frame, right? We want it to appear somewhere on the page. It doesn't matter where the user is. It should pop up when the user click on it. There's a way to do this. So we're going to click here. 
right select that login i'm gonna say okay drag this interactive click here right drag and drop it here then i'm gonna tell him look on click i want not him to navigate but to open uh, overlay that basically means it's going to open it up on the existing frame so i'm going to say open overlay right then i'm going to say uh, close when clicking outside i'll tell you a bit about it let's remove it for now yes i would like to add a background and let's give it about 65 right and let's see what happens now let's click play Okay, scrolling down, scrolling up, all looks good. I click here. Whoa, let's just look at that. It just pops out nowhere, but I'm not able to close it. That's because in this setting here, you can actually say close when clicking outside. Now, if you go back here, it closes. So if I go down somewhere and I click login, it pops up right away, just like a real web. Isn't that cool? So now I'm gonna go back here. Now what I want is when I click on the download button, it should go all the way down to this so i'm gonna say drag this and all the way down to somewhere let's say here okay let's quickly test that out wow that's pretty impressive right okay so we have done the navigation looks good but i want like when the user mouse over this is to change color right okay that's where the next part comes in what I did was all these are, if you look at it, they are all components, right? We have components, these are components, these are components, right? We have components. Now, if I go to my component page, as you can see, these are different components. Now, the best part is Figma allows you to create interactive component. That means you can actually animate between the component within the component. But in order for this to work, you need to subscribe, you need to activate the beta for interactive component just google it you'll find it in figma sign up and you'll get this option as well so first of all let's get them when mouse hover i want the menu to change i'm going to go here click on this and i'm going to say okay on mouse enter i want it to change to this right on mouse enter change to hover and i want it to be animating same for this when mouse leaves when mouse leaves i want it to change to normal and i should animate them now since we had the the button for this this is also a component as you can see so i'm going to go up here and i'm going to say okay let's animate this guy too go down here i'm say on mouse enter i want it to change to this smart animate on mouse leave i want him to ba go back to normal let's have a look how does it look like now whoa look at that doesn't that look like a real menu but it looks like a little weird right because it's kind of like a slow effect how about here mm, not bad at all very nice so if i go down here login boom i go here wow just look at that look at that now you said you created a very interactive site so quickly. You can do a lot more with interactive prototype in Figma. And this is just the very beginning of it. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on interactive prototype. And thank you for watching. Now we have PJ who's going to talk to you about design checklist. Hey, PJ here. I'm currently working remotely. And today I'm going to share you a really cool resource checklist design. So let's get straight into it. So what checklist design does is like it provides you the best design practices around like elements, pages and flow in very good format. So what I mean by good format is like, let's say I go into the element here. I will see like many small components, right? Like avatar, batches, button, cards, table, loading and so many. So for example, like I go into the button and I have created my button, right? So what are the best design practices around that? So here I will see that I'm in a checklist format. So base style is like our different default style and then the shape of it, like the padding, border, border radius, shadow and the variance, like which is the primary and the secondary button and then the copy of it and the states of it. So let's say I have done my variance, I have done my shape and base style so I can check mark them and so I can remember like what I need to work on. 
and they also provide like different examples of it like default so what are the examples of different states right like default hover active focus disabled and visited and on the right side you will see articles uh, related to the button which you can like read and get inspired from and like learn more right so uh, they have different section which is like the pages so if I go into the pages you will see login pricing 404 so what are the best design practices around 404 so let's click in and find out so here you will see like the logo and then the title and the description and the link of link to the other pages and they provide like also uh, optional like illustration pattern and visual flair like this is really good to show off like the brand's personality so i never thought of it and like they mentioned it uh, it's pretty helpful right so now if you go into the inspiration you will see like different inspiration of 404 pages and then the articles and then the examples of it so you can check out like the real examples read more and take inspi inspiration from the designs so that's pretty much it for my share i hope you find it useful so next tip is from the rob thank you pj all right guys, next up, I got another very cool tool for you. It's a Mac application that runs in your toolbar that enables you to extract or copy text from images. I mean, game changer, really. It's super powerful. Uh, it only costs like six or seven bucks and this is by no mean any way sponsored content. I'm just recommending this because I'm using it on a daily basis in my design work and I think you will benefit from it as well. It is very good, for example, when you're doing a mock-up and instead of working with Lorem Ipsum, you want to work with actual content, then you can copy text from any image. Uh, for example, you're sitting in a Google meeting, someone is doing a presentation and you want to copy some text or there is a Figma file that where you don't have edit rights and you want to be able to copy the content, uh, the text, sorry, and paste it into your design. So let me show you how it works. So here we have a design and I want to be able to um change this heading to something more realistic so let's go into google uh, i found a design here and i want to copy a section of this design so i click command shift 2 i select the portion of the text that i of the image sorry that i want to copy now you can see it's copied to my clipboard go back into figma select the text block and simply paste it in i mean it's that simple it's super powerful um, it's by no means perfect if there is some weird or odd characters in front or the text is not is too blurry or too small It it, it just doesn't come out uh, Perfect, you know, there can be spelling errors or characters that it can't recognize It also has some other limitations and that is the languages if you go into the preferences here and check it out It supports only English French Italian German Spanish Portuguese and Chinese So if that's not one of your uh, languages, then unfortunately for you so um, yeah, basically that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great day. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found these useful. See you in the next episode.